Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to American Truck Simulator. My name is Moose78, and this is my ATS Let's Play series. I like to call it Stories from the Road. Hope you guys are doing well today, by the way. We are here just outside of San Rafael, California, and you can see our trailer over there. Picking up something a little bit different today. Uh, picking up a Wilson Bullrack. One of my buddies over on TMS hit me up and wanted to know if I'd like to use it in one of my videos, and absolutely I said yes, because it is an amazing looking trailer. Let's go ahead and get hooked up to it here, take a look at it. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. The guys working on this have done an amazing job uh, getting this converted over to uh, ATS and just adding so much detail to it. Looks really, really good. Uh, this is not the trailer uh, that Bart did a while back. This is uh, the same base. It's a uh, classics uh, bull rack that he released back in the Holland days. But uh, yeah, this thing is pretty stinking legit. Pretty sure they're working on a public release, so kind of keep your eyes out for that. But uh, as of right now, it is not available uh, for download. But at least, uh, you know, at least of this video, but keep an eye out for that. There we go. Go ahead and pull forward here, take a little bit of a closer look at it. Thing looks so cool behind this 389 though at night. And it looks, looks really, really, really good. You kind of see the cattle there. Pretty detailed work on the cattle. So, thanks again for letting me use this. Very much appreciate it. But today we are taking this thing over to Camp Verde, Arizona. So this will at least be a two-part episode, for sure. I'm going to start out doing uh, some night driving this episode to kind of see what the frosty winter weather mod looks at night. The little bit that I have uh, used it at night, I uh, really like the bloom effect that it adds to the flares and headlights and stuff. Looks really, really good. Looking back there, seeing this thing all lit up at night just looks freaking awesome. First, that guy had his uh, left turn signal on. Maybe it was just me. We are good to go.
down the highway here. That's how a bull rack should look, all lit up at night. Not sure how heavy we are. Take a look here. Uh, 50,000 pounds, that's pretty decent. Curious to go across uh, some scales and see if we get flagged or anything like that. Gotta remember to keep an eye on my speed limit there since we are in California. I want to get some uh, videos up on the uh, Christmas content that they released uh, yesterday as well. That is looks kind of cool. Looks like it's in the multiplayer. Pull around these oversized uh, Christmas packages and whatnot. That kind of snuck up on me there. and see what, uh, what transmission I'm using in this. thought it was an 18-speed. Well, that certainly was interesting. Somehow knocked it out of the uh, high gears there. And then killed it. Still trying to get the clutch dialed in. With a new wheel here. Might have to go into the Come on. There we go. So the SKRS has been working uh, pretty good since I got the new G920 installed a couple weeks back. So it's been about two and a half weeks now. So hopefully there's no issues starting to uh, come up with that again.
can't believe it's almost Christmas though. We're just a few days away. It's insane. Kind of snuck up on me this year. Seems like this kind of year's just uh, kind of flown by though. That is faux show. slow down here. Now that's weird that you hit a 65 zone just like that when there's still all this stuff up here in front of you. And it drops right back down to a 30. That's kind of crazy. Come on, there we go. Let's take a look at that again. I don't know. If I can find a smaller magnet about that size, it's just a little bit stronger. That might solve that issue. This is an 18 speed transmission that I have in here. I'll have to stop at a service center or something like that and check that out later on. Not a big deal though. Been working on some uh, stuff there in Z Mod, doing some mod and whatnot. Working on a. Uh, 579 for myself there kind of doing the owner operator version of that you know all skirtless uh, replacing all the SES you know steps tanks and all that stuff so hopefully here in the next uh, couple weeks I'll be able to use that in a video But it's just kind of funny, you know, the rescale comes along and they just kind of, at least me, it's kind of got me more excited about trucks and so I definitely kind of want, want to get in a Z-Mod and get a truck done. You know, once I get that truck done, I'll probably use it about once a week and uh, some content and other videos. I'll just use, uh, of course, other trucks, you know, like in the, my Let's Play videos. I'll kind of feature that one, you know, once a week then. And the other one I'll use just random truck, kind of, kind of like I'm doing today.
course with the rescale, the time cycles are a little bit longer now, which is kind of nice. So, you know, if you want to get out and do some night driving, you can absolutely get out and do some night driving and, you know, totally enjoy it. Uh, I kind of want to mod the 579 just for one. I actually think it's a really cool looking truck in real life, especially, you know, kind of that owner operator version. I know there's a YouTube channel uh, for a dealership. I think it's out in Oklahoma. Steve Carbone, Steve Carboni, probably butchering the last name, but uh, watched a couple videos on their channel featuring the owner operator version of that truck. And man, it's just, to me, it looks pretty daggone cool. You know, it's pretty much the new era of the 379, kind of the aerodynamic version of it. But I like how it doesn't have the skirts and all that stuff, but yet it's still kind of an aero truck. So I kind of want to use that just to be a little bit different because, you know, there's quite a few 379s out there, quite a few W900s out there. You know, that's those two trucks have, you know, always been, you know, kind of the go-to truck for a lot of folks uh, in the truck sim community, and that's fine because I have absolutely used my fair share of 379s and 389s and W900s over the years, and they're great looking pool of trucks. But uh, from time to time, I like to mix it up a little bit and uh, be a little bit different. You know, back in the day, uh, some of the guys probably remember the 387 that I used to use all the time. I need to do something with the uh, 682. I kind of mess around with that one from time to time, too. I'm trying to get the similar setup, kind of owner operator look without any skirts, the you know, skirtless look. Seen there is a uh, Cascadia floating around out there nowadays. It's like a 2018 Cascadia. Thought about using that, maybe looking at that, checking that out. Uh, having some issues every time I try to load it though, it crashes. So don't know if I'll end up using that or not. Depends on if uh, I think I can probably get it, uh, you know, working. It looks like it's one of those mods that's dependent on another mod. So don't know if I'll use that or not, but it looked kind of interesting. At least I was kind of curious to see, you know, what it looked like and all that stuff. I don't know. I'm kind of excited to get that 579 done and kind of have that be my set truck for a while. You know, see how long I can use it, see how many miles I can get put on it. I think it'll be kind of fun. Just got to work out a paint scheme for it. Got some logos that I want to put on it, company logos. Kind of mix it up, be a little bit different. At least different for myself, you know, not different from, you know, anything that anyone else is doing, but different from what I've done in the past, for sure. Definitely excited for 2017 to get here. Holy cow. It's ready to see what uh, 2017 has in store.
definitely not getting any of that uh, new year, new me crap, but definitely ready for the new year. That is for sure. I'm kind of curious to see what uh, year two content we're going to get for uh, ATS here. So we're going to see if we're going to see more trucks in game. Still not really seen any updates on that. I was kind of perusing through uh, the official SES forums the other day and uh, the mega wish list thread. I was taking a look at that uh, in particular and I noticed uh, the first post on there. Granted, it was from like 2015. It was from a ways back. I think it was just before the game came out. Maybe it's quite a bit before the game came out. At any rate, uh, one of the topics in that first post kind of caught my eye, and uh, it was looks like they were or someone was throwing the suggestion out of you know kind of moving from DX9 to DX11. So I'm trying to get some more information on that. If anything, well, for my own curiosity. But if they're working on a DX11 version of this game, that would be pretty awesome, I think. I'd imagine a lot of people would see some pretty big performance boosts. You know, a lot of games now are starting to, you know, kind of have that uh, support for, like, The Division, for example. You know, you can run it in uh, DX11, or they just uh, recently updated to where you can also run it, if you have the capabilities to, if you have Windows 10, run it in DX12. I know Battlefield 1's the same way. So that'd be kind of cool if ATS did something similar where, hey, you can run it in DX9, or if you want to, you can run it in a newer version of uh, DirectX, which would be pretty stinking awesome because I would be all over that. You know, not that I'm getting terrible performance now, but uh, running a newer version of uh, DirectX, my hardware would uh, definitely take, take more advantage of that than it does uh, with DirectX 9. I would imagine I'd see some pretty decent, uh, at least I would hope I'd see some pretty uh, decent performance boosts. Still got to get uh, LSPDFR updated. I don't know what the heck is going on with that, but uh, I'm just gonna, basically just going to start over with a fresh install of GTA 5 and just start from scratch with LSPDFR. So it's still going to be a couple weeks before I can get uh, some more LSPDFR content up on the channel. Because I do enjoy making that uh, series. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of great mods out there that I want to use and all that sorts of stuff, so. I just read some stuff here and there, and uh, I'm just kind of keep putting that off a little bit more. It doesn't sound like uh, the new Rage Hook plugins any more stable than the last one, so. Why does that keep doing that? And that is messed up. I don't know why that is doing that. Went from eight low right down to three low. It makes no sense. I gotta have something besides an 18 speed in this thing. That's the only thing I can think of. I thought I had this thing uh, set up for an 18 speed like I do everything else. Must not have been paying attention or something and just went with whatever I had by default or don't know. I wonder if there is a service station anywhere around us here. Uh, there is. By gosh, by gum. Pull in there and get it checked out. 
because that is kind of crazy annoying. But uh, thank everyone uh, for the support recently and just uh, throughout the year. Really excited to see uh, what 2017 has in store for this channel. I know since I've started to make more of a focused uh, effort on ATS content, you guys have definitely responded very positive to that. And I cannot thank you all enough for that. You know, the timing and everything just worked out really well. You know, with the rescale coming out of beta and going live. You know, SES continues to do a pretty good job of supporting this game, so. I'm really excited to see uh, 2017 as to offer. Looking at the trailer and everything, and almost missed the green light. Whoopsie. I'm not convinced that's an issue with the SKRS. I think I have, like I said, I think I have some random transmission in this thing. I'm gonna go over here to Bakersfield, Pete, and check it out, though. <laughs> 